Welcome. This is what is happening on the 23rd of September 2011. We have two naked eye sunspots. Now you should never look at the sun through a pair of binoculars or a telescope. But these spots are so large that when the sun is behind thick clouds such as you can just see the disk of the sun or very low in the sky before it sets or, ri or just after it rises, you should be able to see these spots with the unaided eye. But even in those low light conditions, don't stare at the sun too long. Okay, now to our trivia question. 165 years ago today, Neptune was discovered. Neptune is the fourth largest planet in our solar system. The first part of the question is, which is the only spacecraft to have visited Neptune? If you were to stand on the surface of Neptune, which of course is impossible because it's cloud, how much would you weigh? 20% less than you do now? 20% more than you do now? 200% more than you do now? Or 2,000% more than you do now? The answer will be given at the end. Since yesterday, we've had seven C flares and another M flare. Interestingly, the M flare was not from region 1302, the new region coming over the northeast limb, but from region 1295 on the northwest limb. In fact, I have a picture of it here, taken at the time of the flare with the GOES SXI instrument. So let's take a look at the active regions and see what is going on. We have four officially numbered regions on the disk, all of which are in the northern hemisphere. We lost 1299 over the west limb yesterday. Well, let's start with region 1295 in the northwest. Contrary to what Noah thinks, I believe this region has grown significantly in the last day. And it has produced five C flares and one M flare in that period. I thought it might be rather interesting to run a movie over the last five days of its evolution and watch how the sunspots all appear and develop and move around. Also note how region 1296, the small region following it, decays as the time goes by. I doubt that it will be with us tomorrow. Next let's move on to region 1301 in the northeast. That region has produced no flares of any sort and seems to have decayed slightly over the last 24 hours. Lastly there's the region 1302 in the northeast. This is the region with the two huge sunspots. Now NOAA reckons that its area is only 480 millionths of the surface area of the Sun. However, doing a quick back of the envelope estimate of the area of the leading spot alone, I make it 1300 millionths. And if you take the whole region, including the trailing part of the region, which is actually probably bigger than the leader, I'd put it between 2500 and 3000 millionths. However, the region has only produced two additional C flares after the X flare that it produced yesterday. So let's follow the continuous evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours using the sunspot and magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. I would follow the evolution of region 1301, the transition region and low temperature coronal movies from the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory show the beautiful structure of the X flare from yesterday. Look on the northeast limb and you'll see some exquisite post flare loops forming after the flare occurred and you get some idea of a coronal mass ejection being launched from it. In the latest high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument, we can see that there's something beginning to come over the southeast limb. It's not very big and it's not very bright, but it may have some spots associated with it in a day or two's time. Although the LASCO data is still fairly sparse, I managed to cobble together this uh, joint image from the C2 and the C3 instrument to show the beautiful coronal mass ejection that came as a result of the X-flare bright object at 2 o'clock in this picture is the planet Mercury. I have looked but have seen no sign of Ellen in these pictures as yet. From the ACE data we can see that the solar wind has been relatively quiet in terms of temperature, density and also velocity over the last day. The high energy electron flux has remained relatively low and we have had a proton event, albeit a relatively small one, from the X-flare. Using the NOAA satellite data to look at the auroral zone, we can see that it is relatively quiet, and the KP index is even more quiet than yesterday, varying between 0 and 2. So in summary then, the X-ray background is still at the C1 level, the sunspot number has dropped to 86, the radio sun intensity has risen to 151 solar flux units, the solar wind speed has dropped to 360 km per second with a density of just under 1 proton per cubic centimetre, and geospace conditions are rated as very quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are almost certain, M flares are likely, X flares are possible. Sunspot numbers should probably drift lower, coronal mass ejections remain likely, the solar wind speed should remain low, 
and a major geomagnetic storm is unlikely. Thinking slightly in the longer term, looking at the composite coronal image, we can see there's a series of small regions behind the southeast limb that are starting to come over. However, the most major region is in the north, but that is still three days behind the east limb. You can also see just west of Sun Center there's a very weak coronal hole stretching up from the southern pole. That may affect us in a day or two's time, increasing the solar wind speed. Now for our trivia question. The only spacecraft to visit uh, Neptune is Voyager 2. Now you should have got that because that was the subject of an earlier trivia question. Now for the hard bit. If you were to stand on the surface of Neptune, the top of the clouds, you'd weigh only about 20% more than you do now. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.